go. The star of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Here he is. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you for the lovely kisses. You can just stay up there, is that okay? Hi everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. So for today's video, I am here with my best friend. <laughs> my dog, Arlo. So I've done a couple of videos of him before in the past. Oh, here he goes. Oh, he just literally loves attention. So yeah, I've done a couple of videos with him before in the past. I've done some updates on him. I actually filmed us getting him as well. Oh, you're literally right in my way. <laughs> This is what it's going to look for the whole video, isn't it? Yeah, and they're always, like even now, one of my most watched videos is always to do with the dog. Like my two of my puppy updates are still watched and I didn't film, I like I filmed them like a year ago, a year and a half ago. No, Tian, that is incorrect. I filmed them like six months ago. I'm just being dramatic. But I thought it would be good to do a little Q&A about the dog because I always get questions about him in the comments of videos. I always get questions on him on Instagram and on his Instagram because he has his own Instagram, yes. I am that person. So I thought, you know what, it's gonna be, I'm just gonna answer them all in one video. For people that are either thinking of getting a puppy and want some advice, want to know a bit about him. No, don't leave, you can't leave, you have to stay here because you're the star of the show. But I'm just gonna try and film this really quickly because as you can tell, he's very fidgety. He hasn't been on a, yet. He heard the word. So how old is he? He was born in July, July 12th, 2021. Yeah. So no, 2020, he was born in 2020, he's gonna be two this year. Oh my God, that makes me so sad. So he was one last year in July. So he's gonna be two again in this year in July. So he's July to July, he's a year and a half, I think. Where did you go to get him? So we traveled so far. The story of us getting him is very, very long. Well, it's not long winded, but it's very spontaneous. We were looking for dogs as we had been for ages because I love dogs and I knew I wanted one as soon as we moved into this house. We wanted to settle in a little bit first. Um, and then we were searching on loads of dog pages for dogs. And we, it was either between a golden retriever, a Labrador, or a working Cocker Spaniel, which is what he is. We saw him and you can get like different colors of Cocker Spaniels, but we saw like the red ones and we thought they looked so nice. George, my partner, found one he was like Tiana there's one left on this site and he's really cute so we messaged the breeder and she was like yeah you can like they're ready for like to come and collect <laughs> and we drove to Lincolnshire from Devon the next day so we literally saw him on the Friday evening may I add we had to run to Tesco because we had nothing like nothing for a puppy we had no puppy pads we didn't have a bed we didn't have a cage we didn't have any bowls we had literally nothing and it was like eight o'clock when the, we decided we were gonna get him on the Saturday. So we have to run to Tesco, try and find anything that we can to get a puppy. This is, I would not recommend doing this because we had no clue what we were in for. I've had puppies before, I like dogs before. They're not, they weren't mine, like my mum and dad had them. So I just kind of like, you know, left all that kind of stuff to them. But we hadn't done any like research properly at all on what we needed what the things were so i wouldn't recommend doing what we did and just make a spontaneous decision but it was the best decision because i love him don't get me wrong but yeah we traveled up to lincolnshire the next day we woke up at five in the morning because it was like a five or six hour drive see so yeah, how we went to lincolnshire to get him that was a very, i don't think that was even part of the question like the story of how we got him but yeah we went to lincolnshire you're facing the wrong way though you need to face look at that there we go that's better so how was he with house training? In terms of like going to the toilet, he wasn't that bad. Like he, the breeder must have like taught them to go outside quite young. He automatically went to the back door when he wanted to go out. And don't get me wrong, there were a couple of accidents every now and again, but like puppy wee, if you have never had a dog before, it's like tiny little dots, like no bigger than a 2p pence. They don't like a massive, massive puddle. It's like tiny little drops of wee. So it's really easy to clean up. Poo, on the other hand, is different <laughs> because it's puppy poo is just not nice because they're on like wet food, they're not on like hard biscuits yet because you have to like make it, nice, make it nice and soft for them. And what comes in soft comes out soft. Let's just say that. There were a couple of accidents, don't get me wrong, but overall, oh, I'm sorry, am I keeping you up? He wasn't bad. There were a couple of accidents, but we cleaned it up every time straight away. And then as soon as he'd done it, we took him outside that he knew that every time he'd done that or wanted to do that, he had to go outside to do that. And then after like a month, maybe two months, he just auto- No! 
he's just ran away. After two months, he basically just went outside automatically and he scratched at the door now when he wants to go out. So the next question was, how was he at night? So the first night we had him was really bad. Um, we, like I said, we didn't have a cage for him or a bed properly. We had like a tiny little bed, but it wasn't that nice. <laughs> so we had, we knew that we had to get, get one the next day because we didn't have to, oh no, hold on, that's a lie. On the way back from Lincolnshire, we stopped at Pets at Home and I got him like a tiny puppy bed and all the bowls and stuff. For the first night, he slept in our room and we, oh, did we have a cage the first night? See, I literally can't remember. No, I can't remember, but I just remember George sleeping on the floor with him because he kept him jump on the bed with us and we didn't want him to like wheel poo in the bed. So we tried. <laughs> George slept on the floor with him the first night. We, I, well, I said we, I went up with him and got up like two times in the middle of the night and then we put him downstairs in his cage. Obviously with like the cage door open so we could explore the kitchen and stuff. And I put puppy pads down on the floor. He did not like puppy pads and even like throughout the whole training of like house training he didn't want to go on the puppy pads he just literally didn't want to some they work for some dogs but clean at all so i wouldn't waste your time with them if your dog doesn't use them at first he's not going to use them so yeah we didn't use puppy pads because like i said he was really quick to get the house training so sorry i was like, car that just went past he would honestly wake up i would say twice it would be like once at like half two three and then once at about six and then from six he was just up then so then when he was up I was up but it wasn't that bad because I was starting work at like seven then so it was an hour before I started work so it wasn't too bad at all and luckily I worked from home because it was during the pandemic yeah he would wake up like at two and then wake up again at six because he wanted to go outside for a wee which was good because I heard him crying to go out and then I took him out for a wee and a poo and like if you had or have had a puppy yeah, they just like to explore the garden for absolutely ages. So I was stood out there in the middle of the night with my dressing gown on, shivering, because it was cold. And he was just taking his time, having all the sniffs and smells in the world. That lasted, again, not that long. It went down to like, he'd wake up once in the night and it was nearer to like, getting up. So the two o'clock start kind of stopped and then it was a six o'clock. And then one night, I just didn't hear him and I woke up to my alarm and I was like, that's strange. Went out to see if he was okay, absolutely fine. There has been some nights where I've come down and I must have not heard him cry to go out and he has like had accidents in the kitchen but that has only happened like twice when he once when he was a puppy and once when he was ill I think he ate something that he did not grow for stomach because he hasn't done it since now he sleeps through the night completely or sometimes he must wake up really early but he doesn't cry to wake us up which is so good um, I don't leave him in the kitchen for more than like eight to ten hours so yeah I could literally go to bed at 11 or like 12 at night wake him up at eight in the morning and he's just sat in his cage waiting for me to say hello to him. How do you deal with teething? <laughs> teething is still an issue, even though he's not a puppy, are you anymore? You just, well, we went through the, the process of yelping really loudly, um, putting him in his cage when it got a bit too aggressive, stopping completely, crossing our arms. We did like loads of things. And no, you literally, you have to stay on my lap. I'm so sorry, but you are the star of the show. He kind of stopped teething when all of his teeth fell out obviously and it's really weird when dogs keep te like teeth because you just find their little teeth just dot around the house sometimes they just swallow them as well which is really really weird but he wasn't too bad with teething once his teeth fell out and then when he plays even now sometimes he like dogs do do this sometimes they play with their mouths so if you're like playing and you're getting a bit rough and stuff he'll like start to bite you and sometimes like even we're having troubles like now that he doesn't understand the pressure of his bite sometimes so he'll be playing with you and it's like quite gentle at first and he's not biting down and then some like he'll just start to like really hard and then we have to like you know tell him no we're not we're not doing that it's not like how you play and then sometimes he gets a bit too excited and he does have like cage timeouts which is like sending him to prison because we lock we put him in his cage shut the door so he knows he can't do that so yeah with teething i would say get all the toys when he starts to bite your hand put a toy in his mouth instead yelp put him in his cage if he gets too excited um but it dies down the older they get the less they bite and it's like even now if i'm playing with him and i put my hand in his mouth he'll just like not do anything because he doesn't know what he's meant to do he's like do i bite down on this do i stop do i lick you are we playing am i fighting you what's going on so oh he's gone okay i knew that was gonna happen eventually so yeah sometimes he does and sometimes he doesn't okay we've moved locations again because this is where he sits 
like all the time on the sofa. What's he like on walks? So I have touched on this in a couple of my puppy update videos. We have always had trouble with his walking and we are actually going to training lessons this year because when we got him in the pandemic, obviously training lessons in person had stopped completely and there were like virtual training lessons, but I didn't want that because I found that quite awkward. I didn't want to be that person on Zoom that's like asking loads of questions and stopping the lesson. I'd rather do that in person so I could speak to the person after. So yeah, I didn't want to do online lessons. And then by the time virtual lessons started, he was already set in his way. So we are going to puppy training lessons now. His recall is very temperamental. Like if he's off the lead in a place he doesn't know, he'll follow us. He's quite good at that. But if he's in a place where he knows, like I walk him in the same field every single day, he will literally run off and then he, unless he sees you walking, why is he going somewhere else? Unless he sees you walking in a different direction in the field, then he'll just like kind of do his own thing. And the field I'm walking was a big hill. So if I'm at the bottom of the hill and he'll hear a dog at the top of the hill, he will sprint up that hill <clears throat> no matter how much I call him. So he's really bad at recall. <sighs> he pulls a lot as well, which I'm having an issue with because it hurts my arm so much. Then we have a really long lead. So he doesn't pull on that lead all the time, but basically walking with him isn't fun. <laughs> I have to admit, I, let, I do just let him run off sometimes. When I take him to my mum's house and I let him off the lead, he's quite good at coming back because he doesn't know the area, but she panics. I do let him off if there's no dogs around as well, because sometimes when he goes running up to another dog, you don't know one, if they're aggressive, two, if they're like anxious or scared. You can kind of gauge sometimes if the owner wants another dog to come up to their dog or not. If a dog is on a lead and Arlo's not off the lead, I will try and grab Arlo as soon as I can because clearly that dog doesn't want to be around other dogs or isn't well trained, like my dog, probably should be on the lead all the time. I know, don't come for me. I'm going to lessons to talk that out, but I will always make sure to grab him before he gets to another dog. I'm quite like, aware of everything like I can see there's a person that have a, that has a dog I won't let Arlo off the lead I will only let Arlo off the lead if there are no dogs around or if there are dogs I know around that I know like in the area that don't mind Arlo or you know that come running up to Arlo because that wants to play then I'll let Arlo off the lead and they can have a play together but if I'm in a field and I see a, a dog whose owner I don't really know and they're on the lead I will grab Arlo straight away he's really good at playing he loves other dogs so much like he loves playing with other dogs so much and he's a really friendly dog like if he sees another dog in the park he wants to go play with it he'll stop and he'll look at me he does this really weird thing actually he doesn't run over to the dog straight away he'll like stop and stare to kind of gauge if the other dog wants to play and then he kind of makes a beeline for them but yeah he loves playing with other dogs so much and it's really cute to see but he thinks he's like the size of a great dane because he'll play with like labradors and alsatians and big dogs and I'm like honey you're gonna get hurt because you are tiny strange slash odd things that he does where's he gone look at his arm <laughs> are you okay <laughs> he's a bit of a weird dog I'm not gonna lie he does this really weird thing where he thinks he's a human and every time we're at the dinner table if one of us like moves our chairs to like clear our plate or get a drink he automatically jump on our chairs not try and get our food he'll just sit on the chair and if we have people around, like friends around, and we're like all drinking, one time we literally got him a separate chair to sit down on. He's wanted to be involved. Come on then, I can come. What other weird thing? Oh, watch this. He loves getting brushed, which I don't think many dogs do. Um, he's sat on my lap right now. He's like, here. Hi. <laughs> so he loves getting brushed. If you say the word, watch this, hold on, let me hold him up. If you say the word potatoes, I don't know why, I don't know why he, potatoes. <laughs> I don't know why he does that. He really likes dark spaces, so he likes to hide under our blanket. If we're like watching a film in the evening, or watching TV in the evening, he'll like to like come under the blankets with us. That's kind of weird. Share some funny videos or pictures. I will put some pictures on screen of funny ones I have him. This one here is my all time favorite picture of him because he just looks so ugly and it makes me laugh so much. And he reminds me of Sid the Sloth, so that's hilarious. I've got so many funny videos of him, but I don't like my voice or laugh in them. I might do a compilation one day, but he does the weirdest things and the stupidest things. He's a bit, he is a funny, he is a funny dog. Like I'm with him all the time because I work from home and he does crack me up. The little things that he does are quite funny. Was he your first dog? No, I have had dogs my whole entire life. It wasn't my first dog. It was George's first dog, but it wasn't, it wasn't my first dog because I've had family dogs, but it was my own first dog that like in my own home without like parents around, you know what I mean? Or like my mum around. So 
yeah he's literally just got a bottle to play with and it's like the loudest thing which is just great what tricks can he do he's really i've always said this he's really good at doing tricks he's really bad at training stuff so he's bad at like walks and recall and like the main things that you need but he's really good at tricks so he can do sit he can do he can do sit pour he can give high fives he can spin around he can lay down he can roll over he can like jump up uh he does wait he's really good at waiting he can speak if you ask him to speak he barks oh he can go in between your legs like he can like do a figure of eight between your legs and he can go through your legs if you ask him and i know i'm gonna get so many like people trying to be helpful giving me advice but i've we've literally done it all as much as i appreciate the advice we have done it we've done recall leads it doesn't work <laughs> we've done long leads we've done literally like everything you can think of that you can find online we've done so that's why we are going to a trainer because nothing is working Basically. Will you be getting any other dogs? I really want to. I really, really want to. But we won't get any other dogs until he's fully trained. We were actually like this close to getting one last year again. Um, and it was actually his half brother. And we were so close. Like, we messaged them and they were lovely and we were like talking. And then I had to say to her, We are interested in getting another one from you because I would love for him to have like a brother. That'd be so cute. But. I want to wait till he's better trained because I can barely handle walking him on one walk, yet alone two of them. So, yeah, one another dog won't be for a while because I want him better trained. Once he's fine on walks and stuff and recall, then yes, we'll be getting another dog. Top advice for a new puppy owner for the first time. Oh, congratulations! That's so exciting. So, top advice would be do your research before you get the dog because every single breed of dog is different depending, you know, because like some dogs are more hyperactive than others, some need more attention on one certain thing than the other. So definitely do your research on your specific dog, which we didn't do. Make sure you are prepared. <laughs> so have like the crate set up, have blankets and all the toys and all the teething stuff and all of that, do that. Shop around for insurance, because that is a thing people I think forget about. Shop around for insurance. Also like their worming tablets and stuff that people don't really talk about. Get your jabs done for him. Like there's like loads of medical things and like the boring stuff that I think people don't talk about. So definitely look into that more. Book them into training lessons as soon as you can because I regret that heavily. Although it's not really our fault because of the pandemic, you know. But try and do some sort of training with them more regularly. And yeah, I think that's the main advice. Oh, and socialization is such an important thing. Make sure they socialize with other dogs and as many people as possible because they'll get used to, you know, if you if we had no one in our house ever and then all of a sudden Arlo met people in the house when he was like one, he would be one, scared or two, protective and aggressive. So socialize people as, like socialize the puppy as much as you can with other people and other dogs so that he knows how to interact with dogs. Because he's really, really good at playing because on our walks everyone everyone loves a puppy don't they so they'd always come up to us and ask us questions about the dog and then you know their dog would then play with Arlo so socialize as much as you can and also just enjoy it and take loads of photos because Arlo grew up so fast I think that's it for this video guys because he's been scratching to get out for <laughs> the last like five minutes wait 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 for the last five minutes so I am going to go I hope you enjoyed this kind of video it's a bit different Oh, it's not really sharp claws. It is a bit different to, you know, my content, but I know that videos of him, you guys like to see. I like to film them because I just love him because he's my best friend. So, hi, hi. Don't forget to give it a big like and subscribe if you don't already. Um, any other videos you want to see with Arlo, do let me know. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you soon for a brand new video. Oh my God, bye.